Well, the, the same problem exists with the value of f. For example, if you have a cost and you express the cost in uh, dollars or in euros, well, there's a factor between them. And if it's dollar versus uh, kilo euros versus or millions of euros, well, one is going to go uh, a million times faster than the other. So you will need to adjust epsilon given the scale of f. And for example, if I tell you, well, actually I'm not that much interested in f, what I really care about is the, uh, the square of f, or the logarithm of f, or any transform of f that ranks the points x in the same order. So I, I don't care about the numerical value. In some problems you do, in some problems you don't. Uh, but um, one thing we would like to have in any case is that the algorithm only depends on the ranking uh, of different uh, values of f. That is, you can tell whether one point is better than the other, but by how much, maybe it's not relevant. Um, so what you can do is replace f of x with an evaluation of how good x is according to your current beliefs. So uh, I'm going to denote this by q f theta of x. And this will be a quantity that gives um, higher values for better points, but that only depends on the ordering of points according to f, and not on the numerical values of f. So, you say that uh, the quality of a point x ranked according to f and according to your current beliefs is, well, if you have any sample of points, you have your current sample, uh, you have 10 points, and clearly you can rank them, you have the best one and the worst one. And you are going to say, you are going to use quantites. So, uh, it's the proportion of points. The quality of x, of a given x, is the proportion of points according to your current sample that would be worse. So, and this proportion, this is, this proportion is taken as probability, uh, as, uh, Sorry, this is the probability for x, for x prime, following your current beliefs, uh, p theta. So uh, the optimum of x, the, the best x is going to have a quality of one, and the worst x is going to have a quality of zero, according to this. And this only depends on uh, the rankings of f. That means that f. Uh, can take values in, no, in an abstract ordered set. Uh, now, the problem is to evaluate this in practice. So, if you have a sample uh, x1, x, and sample from p theta from your current beliefs, you can approximate uh, the quality of x by simply counting the number of points, the proportion of points in your sample that are better or worse than x. So it's 1 over n times the number of i in your sample such that f of x i, uh, sorry, the number of j the quality of xi is the proportion of samples that are worse than xi. And so now you have replaced all your expectations over p theta with samples, and you have practical algorithms that you can use uh, to uh, move theta.
that to a new value. And this algorithm is given by a gradient ascent in theta space. So this is the eigo update. So eigo means uh, information geometric optimization. Uh, this is theta prime equal theta plus epsilon times the gradient of the natural gradient with respect to theta of oh sorry times the integral of the quality times the natural gradient of log p theta of x Uh, and this integral is with respect to p theta and this is what you get if you have infinitely many samples that is, if you compute the expectation exactly and in practice you have a sample size and you replace the integral with a sample, Monte Carlo sample and the quality with the empirical quality inside your sample and what is interesting is so now you have from any search space x and any family of probability distributions on the search space capital X, you get a searching algorithm. Uh, it doesn't depend on whether the uh, space X is discrete or continuous. For example, you can use this with X equal, equal Rn or X equal uh, uh, discrete space if you're searching uh, for uh, uh, discrete uh, characteristics that depends on whether you use uh, you have n characteristics that you can either switch on or off or such things and the other thing you need is to define a family of probability distributions on your space so on our end there is an obvious choice which is a uh, family of all Gaussian distributions uh, including all means and all covariance matrices and for, um, for discrete search basis you uh, can have you can use uh, Bernoulli uh, probability distributions on uh, on this space and uh, actually so I have to uh, tell you that I didn't do any of this because uh, the uh, algorithm you get from Rn with Gaussian distributions was already known and the algorithm you get from uh, um, the uh, uh, discrete Rn with Gaussians this gives an algorithm known in the literature as covariant matrix adaptation uh, evolutionary strategy evolutionary strategy is to acknowledge, acknowledge the uh, 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 genetic algorithm uh, inspiration and covariance matrix adaptation because at each step you change the mean and the covariance matrix. So this was in the 90s, this was defined in the 90s. Uh, and for um, Bernoulli, for Bernoulli distribution um, on uh, zero one uh, on uh, the discrete cube search space uh, for where you uh, the parameter theta is uh, the probability to have uh, the uh, given bit set to zero or one you get an algorithm uh, known as PBIL uh, population based incremental learning uh, which which was also defined in the 90s I guess uh, by various people actually um, so this is more like a common mathematical description of uh, already known algorithms so one key feature of these algorithms is as I said that they do not depend on the choice of representation of x so if you change the basis of Rn it doesn't change the algorithm and that is very important because you uh, do not 
need to worry about whether you represent this parameter. If you have one parameter, uh, which is the, line, uh, the number of lines of code, and that parameter, which is the length of your mobile phone, you don't need to worry about uh, whether you have to scale one of them so that you get reasonable numbers. Uh, this is taken care of by the invariant of the algorithm. The algorithm is invariant under a change of representation of the problem, and that is a major uh, feature. Uh, these algorithms have been tried on a variety of, uh, of uh, problems. There is a list of, uh, uh, I think, CMA, CMAES. There are uh, several hundreds of uh, problems on which it has been tried and found to perform very well. So, so this is not only common description of known algorithms, it's also a systematic way to build new algorithms based on new probability distributions. And here, um, information geometry will uh, come back because um, one key feature of the natural gradient is, if you remember, uh, the natural gradient is given by the relative, relative entropy of one distribution with respect to the other. And so imagine that you start with a very wide uh, distribution on your search space, for example, a, a uniform on a discrete search space, or a Gaussian matrix with a very wide covariance matrix on Rn. This means, remember the, the definition of the gradient, it was uh, the argmax of f bar of theta minus the penalty and the penalty was, uh, is given by the pullback library divergence between the new value of theta and the old value of theta. And this means, if you start with a uniform distribution, this means that you penalize uh, the quantity of information you introduce uh, into your distribution, which is the loss of diversity. If you start with initial uh, large diversity for p theta, a wide distribution, the pullback library divergence will measure the speed at which you reduce, you concentrate your p theta around a given point. Um, if you do not use the natural gradient, you are going to, uh, instead of penalizing the loss of diversity, you are going to penalize the change in the numerical values of the parameters for theta, which is uh, uninteresting. Uh, if you penalize loss of diversity, it means that you do not make any arbitrary choices into uh, uh, how you move them. In particular, we have tried this with richer distribution on the uh, discrete cube search space. So instead of using Bernoulli distributions, a Bernoulli distribution on the discrete cube, it has a unique optimum. It has a unique maximum at some point, uh, except when uh, all probabilities are equal to one half. Uh, but you can define a more complex probability distribution on the discrete cube, which are multimodal. For example, if you know about Boltzmann machines, you can define um, probability distributions on uh, the uh, discrete cube, which have uh, multiple uh, maxima at various points. And this is very useful, because if you have a function that has several, um, sorry, that has several maxima, for example, if you have uh, a function with two uh, maxima with nearly equal values, but one is slightly better than the other, uh, you would want to use, uh, to explore this, you would want to use a probability distribution that is not picked around one point, but that is able to represent a multiple values. Uh, for example, multiple hypotheses for your search like a combination of several Gaussians or whatever, and this is easy to build. Uh, and thanks to the use of the natural gradient, you minimize at each step the loss of diversity in, your, uh, in, your, in how your probability distribution evolves. And we have tested this on a simple example of a function of the discrete cube with for, for instance, if you put uh, a function with two uh, optima at the opposite ends of the discrete cube, um, if you use uh, the vanilla gradient, 
uh, the gradient uh, in the Euclidean matrix for theta, then you end up with only one optimum. But if you use the natural gradient, then you keep the two optima all alone because you minimize the loss in diversity, so there is no reason to, uh, uh, to go in one direction rather than the other. And so in situations where you have to keep all the optima, using the natural gradient really has an important effect on the behavior of, of your algorithm in terms of uh, maximizing the diversity of your working hypothesis. Uh, so this is about um, optimization and now I have to um, discuss a bit a uh, second problem. Can I have five more minutes? Sorry? Okay. So I have to uh, acknowledge a problem with the natural gradient which is scalability. Because if you work in theta space, so you have to maintain a matrix uh, of size, uh, the dimension of theta times the dimension of theta. It's a square matrix, and you have to uh, just fill in, fill in the, uh, the entries of the matrix. And this is quite heavy uh, computationally because you have to uh, estimate these, uh, all these entries of, the, of this matrix, and then you have to invert the matrix, uh, which is not a problem. So already just filling in the matrix is quadratic in the dimension of theta which itself, for Gaussian distribution, is quadratic in the dimension of x. So this is a serious problem. And um, I've been working uh, last year on another application of the, uh, of the natural gradient, which is to uh, neural networks. So uh, neural networks, you have a set of...